In this video, we'll look at five crypto categories that Coinbase want to invest in right now. Coinbase Ventures just released this blog post with 10 ideas and sectors that they're looking to invest in and grow throughout the bear market into the next bull market. So what are the narratives that are going to form around these different ideas and sectors? What are some tokens or projects that are going to benefit from this? And are any of these investable? I'm going to go through all of that throughout this video. I'll leave timestamps for all of the different ideas and sections down in the description below. Before we get into this video, I did release some updates to the crypto investor course a few weeks ago on a lot of these ideas and how they are being invested in right now. You can see there's 35 minutes of video here about Ethereum and altcoins. Uh, a lot of these ideas were discussed. If you want to check out the crypto investor course, it is down in the description. I update it for free for existing users. You can check out the details via the link below. All of these product categories are introduced by Brian Armstrong, the CEO of Coinbase. So the first one we're going to look at is what he calls flat coins. I've got many uh, opinions on this, which I'll let you know after you can hear him explain what a flat coin is. What is a flat coin? Well, it's interesting to compare it to what we have today. You know, Bitcoin is really an amazing new form of money. It's kind of a return to the gold standard. One of the challenges with it, uh, it's deflationary. People believe, as I do, that it has so much potential upside that they're a little bit reluctant to spend it today. And so what people have done in the absence of wanting to spend their Bitcoin is they've been spending stable coins. There's a lot of fiat backed stable coins. But one of the challenges with stable coins is that they're backed by fiat. So that means they have a lot of the same inflation risks. And so what would it look like to have a better form of money in the crypto space? Well, it'd be something that's uh, decentralized and maybe tracks CPI. So uh, CPI is the is the uh, consumer pricing index. Flat coins are a complete non-starter, in my opinion, a complete joke and ridiculous category. This is what happens when you have a company listed on the stock market that needs to earn revenue for its users. Bitcoin is the invention which can help us protect our money from currency debasement as it, and inflation. When you invest in products, there is risk and volatility. You absolutely cannot invent a way to track CPI. There's nothing inherently special about crypto that enables people to create asset-backed securities. Asset-backed securities exist already for decades. ETFs, exchange-traded funds, BlackRock, Fidelity, creating all of these assets. When you have an asset-backed security, you need something in the asset backed security to have the value, right? So if you have an S&P 500 index, they go out and buy all of those stocks and keep them. And then the exchange traded fund that tracks those stocks has those stocks underlying. That's what the value is. You cannot create any type of asset backed security, whether it's crypto or not, that tracks CPI. If it could be done, BlackRock would be doing it already. You cannot track the CPI because the CPI is a basket of goods, a basket of consumer goods. So if you want to create an asset backed security of CPI, you need to go out and you need to buy red meat, chicken wings, vegetables, Netflix subscription. It's impossible. It's That's why it doesn't exist. This is a joke of an idea. It's a complete waste of time. But this is what happens when you have a company that needs to create products to earn fees to pay profits back to its shareholders. The next feature we'll look at though is on-chain reputation. I do believe this one has legs. This is going to be important for many things, including you know, reputation of lending and borrowing, uh, and also a lot of other aspects of finance that do require KYC specifically. Uh, and so we'll see uh, Brian Armstrong explain this a little bit. The blockchain is just another graph structure where the nodes are the addresses or the ENS. Um, the edges are the transactions between them. And you could or someone could build an on-chain reputation score um, that is kind of like a, a crypto equivalent of, of page rank. We definitely don't want a CBD style type of currency that tracks everything you do online. But there are some aspects of your financial life where it could really benefit you to actually have some, for example, FICO scores or, you know, other reputation where you've borrowed money and paid it back. And that may help you in the future. Now, Binance are actually working on this specifically as well. They already have this product. It's called Binance Account Bound Token. Now, how this works is you do your KYC with Binance. They enable you to issue this token. For right now, this is only on the Binance Smart Chain. That account bound token is linked to the KYC that Binance hold for you. You can then go and use DeFi on Binance 
um, and that token is linked to your KYC. Now that token cannot be transferred to another address. So that uh, you know cuts off the black market of actually having KYC account bound tokens being traded by scammers or frauds or anything. The way that you can change it to another address is by sending it back to Binance and then issuing it again you can issue it to a new address. But reputation online is big. Now, who is going to benefit from this? I don't personally see many small altcoins benefiting from this. I think gen generally it's going to be large decentralized networks that act as that neutral settlement layer and a neutral database for data. So you're going to be looking at Ethereum and then the other L1 chains are also going to have that. So, you know, Cardano, BNB has it already, um, you know, and some other, you know, scaling solutions, for example, Coinbase with the base token. Uh, they don't have a token yet, but base is a layer two blockchain on Ethereum. Coinbase is going to be benefiting from this. Anyone that is an, is able to do KYC and issue that token will benefit in my opinion. So Binance, Coinbase, the other exchanges potentially. But again, it's mostly on Ethereum and the layer twos on Ethereum. So a neutral database is going to be ETH. That is the leader in this category. The next idea is job or task marketplaces within crypto. Now, this makes a lot of sense because crypto enables people to send and receive payments from around the world. So if you want to hire someone online within Web3 to do something, you can look for that online and cut out the middleman, which can be expensive, and then send them a direct payment. So I do believe there are some benefits here that crypto gives us. But again, I think some of the altcoins that are trying to take advantage of this may not be good investments. We can actually see some that he mentions down here, but these are his ideas. I'll, I'll let you listen to him first. One of the big areas that we could unlock, uh, you know, to get billions of people on chain is like, everybody needs to earn a living, right? Like, how can we make the global job market more efficient? Why not have a, a product or a service that's a little bit more like um, a global marketplace for labor? And you could imagine um, ideas being posted there where it could be like simple tasks that needed to be completed, or it could be actual, you know, full-time jobs or contract jobs. So I think we can separate this out into two different layers, which is really important from an investment standpoint. The first one is peer-to-peer -peer payments are a massive invention. This is really the main invention of crypto is sending money or value from one person to another person. doesn't matter where they are. As long as they have a connection, they can receive it. That's the first thing. The second thing and the layer on top of that is, is investing in a jobs marketplace protocol going to be a good idea? And the answer I think mostly is no. So we can see these honorable mentions down here. So we'll look at these. The first one is what's known as earn.com. Coinbase actually acquired this. So obviously they're mentioning this for a specific reason. Now, this was actually a way to, um, earn money from people that would read a newsletter. So you can send newsletters out or other types of email and actually pay them a little bit of money, like a micro payment to do something that you want them to do. So that could be used in marketing, online marketing, email marketing, or some, some other thing where actually you're paying a micro payment to people to do something. Now, who's that really going to benefit? Those micro payments take place with stable coins for the most part. So you're looking at Ethereum again, or you know, competitive L1s or L2s on top of Ethereum. So you're looking at the base chain, you can't invest in that. So the investment is Ethereum. You're looking at Polygon, BNB, you know, other cheap chains, even Tron, right? Tron unironically has the vast majority of stablecoin flows, or it's at least the number one, right? So I think those are really the, the layer one coins that can accrue value there. In terms of investing in some of these, you know, other coins, we'll look at uh, Brain Trust right here. And we can see the VC type of investment strategy that goes on. What we can see here is that Brain Trust is trying to be a middleman, like a, a marketplace like Upwork or Fiverr or something where you look for talent. Now, BTRST, Brain Trust, they actually have a token, BTRST. And the way that they use that token is as an incentive to reward our community to use our product. So what they're actually doing, this is the VC way of doing things is, they're paying you to use the product. Now, Uber did this by just um, giving cheaper fees, giving cheaper rides, right? So they just paid their, their own dollars that they raised from VCs and they made rides cheaper to cut out all of the competition, to bring you into that application. And then eventually they switch over to actually charging you money because all the competition isn't there anymore. So you wanna use it, you gotta pay up. 
the way that they're doing things now within crypto is instead of paying actual money to you or making the product cheaper, they're creating a token out of thin air and giving it away as an incentive to say, hey, look, you can earn this token. The problem is, is that why would you want to earn that token anyway? And also, why would you want to invest in something that's being given away for free? So we can see right here, this is Brain Trust token. If we look at the one year performance, it's obviously going to be down, right? We're in kind of a bear market, but pretty terrible performance. Why? Well, why would you think something being given away for free would have much value? So that's the problem is that the token on a late, or this type of token is more like you're investing in an equity without any of the benefits of an equity in terms of ownership of that company or cash flows from it. So it's like this token is designed specifically just to be given away and have no value. So for me, not investable. Ironically though, see where this token is issued. It's issued on Ethereum. And so again, you just want to invest in the decentralized network that is the database where all of these tokens and assets are issued and traded and those fees are charged every time. So again, for me, you're looking at layer one coins or some, if you want to take a little bit more risk and have a bit more, you know, um, volatility during a bull market, if and when it comes again, then you're looking at some of the layer two coins that could benefit as well. Now we get onto the favorite narrative of all, which is on-chain games. One of the big areas around this is people could actually own the in-game items, right? And these games could exist in a persistent world where um, owning those items actually has real meaning. Not only can you take it out of the game and do other things with it, um, but it's, it's an ongoing world with lots of different real human and AI players um, where you know, the value of it is not just in your own personal experience playing it, but it's in a broader sort of uh, world or economy that develops. On-chain gaming is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. There's a lot of investment in this. There are some on-chain games right now which are quite popular. It's not a big industry yet, but there's a lot of investment here and there are many uh, games in development. Now, on-chain gaming may be slightly different from some other aspects of gaming, but nonetheless important. The real invention of on-chain games for me is the creation of assets, right? Because you have the worldwide decentralized database like Ethereum, where you can issue non-fungible tokens or fungible tokens. So you can create in-game monies or you can create in-game systems um, and then trade those different types of assets within them. So I think that's important. Now, again, how do you invest in that? Because so many gaming tokens are going to go to zero. So let's have a look at this. I want to highlight um, the NFT trading of DraftKings. Now, I don't think that uh, drawing pictures of animals on JPEGs is, is going to be an industry that ever comes back. Uh, I think that's just down, down only forever. However, if you look at DraftKings, you know, DraftKings is a, a real company, right? They're a real company that has a real product already, which is uh, fantasy leagues. And with fantasy leagues, you have a lot of players, you can trade those players. And of course those players, or, you know, they can become NFTs, they can become tokens. Now this is a, what I would call a huge success with DraftKings. You can see football, UFC, PGA Tour. People are trading, trading these players, trading these NFTs that they get within DraftKings, but they are now NFTs on the Polygon system. That creates a lot more transparency. You can have something of real value. You can trade it. Hey, maybe even if you have something of value, you can then collateralize it, right? And, and, and take dollar value out of it without having to sell it. There's many things here with, where you can have a DeFi ecosystem around this as well. It's real. I think it's really big. It's potentially very big. It's not about JPEG monkeys, but it's actually about Real companies that have users that do things, some of these fungible, non-fungible tokens will have value and then you can create them. So you can trade those cards if you want. That's not really investing. That's just, you know, card trading. But if we go to the right hand side, now we can see the chains that these are on. Ethereum, Mythos chain, uh, Solana, Immutable X, Polygon, BNB chain. So these are the sales on those chains. So these chains are making it possible to create, um, you know, cards or nft trading cards and other things like that which are an industry and they can grow now imagine this through thousands of different games we have in-game communities that trade you know csgo um you know knives and everything so it's possible i think it's going to take a long long time but for me the investable portion is the l1 chain that just takes a fee every time these uh, these things are traded and that the really expensive assets are issued on
Next, we have real world assets. These are going to be absolutely huge in terms of market size, market capitalization. There's no doubt about that. Real world assets coming on chain. What's going to be done here is that gold is going to trade on chain. You're actually seeing tether, you know, tether gold and other gold uh, crypto assets you can buy already. Oil, other types of contracts, everything's going to come on chain. So what can we invest in? Again, Ethereum is the gold standard here. But let's have a look at some, you know, other uh, kind of companies or altcoins that are trying to do this. Central Centrifuge is one that uh, Brian Armstrong listed or talked about. Real world impact. As you can see down here, what happens is real world assets coming on chain. Most of this right now is actually uh, US treasuries being brought on chain because they provide the yield and people want mostly to invest in US treasuries if they've got dollars. So as you can see, Maker are doing a lot of uh, work with US treasuries, trying to bring on real world assets like that. So you can have those assets, you can lend them, you can you know, uh, securitize them or loan against them. So there are many things that you can do. But those real world assets are important because people want to invest in those too. This is another real world asset that's coming online. This is on Tron and Ethereum. This is from uh, the Tron ecosystem, but it is USDT invested in uh, short-term government debt. So what they do, you take your USDT, you can invest, or that will be invested for you in short-term government bonds. So obviously US bills, uh, and they give you that uh, yield back right now, yielding 4%. So that's actually like a middleman investing in US bills for you. Who is going to exactly benefit from all of this though? Well, it's important to know who is actually coming in to this product category. BlackRock CEO says next generation for markets is tokenization. We're going to get BlackRock, we're going to get these, you know, Fidelity and others coming into this market sector. And so I believe that a lot of the smaller altcoin players are going to get completely destroyed when these huge players come in. They're starting with Bitcoin and they're going to go down the list with Ethereum and then they're going to start issuing lots of different real, real world assets, or maybe on their own chains or on layer twos, right? So that's, that's where the customers are and those products are going to be fed out to them. Some of these smaller altcoins uh, may have some success, but the big boys are going to come in and destroy most of it. But which chain is the gold standard for which most of these assets are issued underlying? It's Ethereum again. So Ethereum, and then if you want to take more risk, it's maybe layer twos on Ethereum that some of these um, players can use. We've seen Polygon being used by some banks. I'm sure there are going to be many other chains as well that are coming about that could be layer twos on ETH. But again, this... For, for this type of product, it really is ETH that is you know, tailor-made for real-world assets coming on chain and tokenization. All of these crypto sectors that we're looking at are just ways to productize finance in a crypto way. So cheaper fees and maybe they can make higher profit margins out of these things. So this is so different to Bitcoin. I'm still very bullish and mostly bullish on Bitcoin. These are financial products being built out within crypto, which do have value. Uh, and importance, but Bitcoin for me is the gold standard right there. If you want to see my research on Bitcoin, the halving cycle coming up, my investment strategy for BTC and ETH and others, uh, check out the Crypto Investor course. There's 300 videos and I updated it recently. Uh, link in the description for that. I'm James's Bunny ZG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.